All right, guys, I'm trying to uh, figure out what's going on here, but welcome to Framework Fortune. Let me just check something real quick off on the side here. It's time for your daily crypto update. We're going to be taking a look at everything, making sure the market is going to hold up. And then if you guys have any projects you want me to take a look at, I don't have anything on my plate, so I absolutely can look at some of those. First, though, give me just a few minutes here as I try to get everything straightened out. Make sure that I'm not doing something stupid. You know, bear with us. It's a new year. We're using new streaming platforms and things like that. And it's just, you know, there's going to be some snags, especially with live streams. Let's see, what's Adam doing? Oh, Adam looking nice, coming back up to 40 already. So if you're, if you're a cosmonaut, you're feeling pretty good right now. You're not too worried about the market. Okay, well, just change this one thing and we'll be good to go. So we did learn that the progress bar on the Gods Unchained ranked is not working if you are a Gods player. Uh, multiple people have been talking about it. Ah, whatever. I'll work with it. I can't get it to work the way I want to. We'll just mess with it later. All right, what's up, Ruben? Glad to see you back, buddy. But yeah, Cosmos Adam bouncing off at 10-day moving average, coming back up, testing 40 right now, getting close to it. Actually did throw a wick up over it to 41.74. So Cosmos still looking very bullish. I think we're going to see it up to 50. And that pullback didn't affect it. You can see a caution, the Cosmos ecosystem starting to turn back bullish been on a downtrend for a while since that initial rip all the way up to 650 but holding that support that it previous held back previously held back here so that is a nice sign on the cosh with Adam moving that we'll continue to see that um, DVPN I don't know what's going on with this project I don't have a whole lot invested in it but if it doesn't start turning around soon I may unlock them funds out of my Kepler wallet, which will take 21 days, but if I can cut my loss on it, put it in something that's worth it, should be good. Fetch, it's doing okay. Iris just riding the trend line. News not even supposed to be in the Cosmos ecosystem. Persistent still kind of testing around down here. Looked like it was going to follow that path, but now it's dipped out of it since that pullback yesterday. Let's see if persistence can come back up. Axie Infinity. Axie Infinity took the plunge yesterday, but has rebounded some. Bounced off of 75, so 75 is going to hold us some support. So we'll just bring this down to that 75 area. This downtrend or this uptrend is gone. This was obviously wrong. This route was the route that it took just took it a lot quicker but that is the bottom support for Axie at 75 and then 100 is going to act as resistance if we come back up to 100 again because it could not hold $100 support through this area it tried but was unable to do it so that's still going to be very strong resistance this means buyers are not willing to hold or well not willing to hold up here at 140 125 or even a hundred dollars so Axie does have a a big lead on a lot of the NFT projects and I'm just curious if this drop is because 
maybe it's too overvalued at these prices because it was the only one out there. There was, there was one of the few out there that was actually playable uh, the past few years and able to make some money. So just like Bitcoin dominance, uh, Bitcoin losing its dominance a little bit to Ethereum, we could see that same type of thing in the NFT space where Axie might lose some of its dominance to Gods Unchained and these other projects, Quantum and, uh, you know, there's tons of NFT games now. Like if people get tired of Axie, which there will probably always be a following and a base for because there's going to be people who's making tons of money. But I would say at this point in the game, majority of the people trying to get in is probably too much of a, a paywall to break. So that may cause Axie to self-implode, possibly. It's just a thought, and I don't know for sure. But it's definitely definitely something affecting Axie's price where it does not want to stay above $100. What's up, boy? <laughs> CGLD, the swing I was in, I took that profit on Voyager up around here. Not looking to hold it when it got rejected off of this uptrend, or I'm sorry, the downtrend, because it could easily sell back off, and it may sell back off if it can't hold the 50-day here at 475. And that's when I that's when I would look to re-enter if it sells back off of those trend lines, because then we could see a bounce and a big breakout. It still is possible CGLD could push up, but we don't know. If the crash is going to continue, like just because we're seeing rebounds last night and into today doesn't necessarily mean that we'll continue to see that into tomorrow, but we need to see rebounding, you know, prices of all the coins coming back up tomorrow too to kind of confirm that we did hit a bottom for now. If not, there could be more room that we drop. Well, let's actually look at Bitcoin and Ethereum real quick and get an idea of where they're going. So, clearly Bitcoin looks like it's jumping down in to the downtrending path. But, look very close at these two days' candles. It's a double bottom. So both times, both days so far, yesterday and today, buyers have not let this go under 42,000. There's buyers willing to hold this up. Uh, people are willing to buy it at 42,000. So let's just check a shorter time frame. Let's go into a two hour and see if we're getting an uptrend from the drop. So there's the bottom of the drop. Well, technically that's the bottom. Eh. I guess that's a double bottom. They're so close together. So we do have a bit of an uptrend and it started from that bottom on the two hour. And that's basically what we want to see hold up. We want to see Bitcoin continue to climb up this uptrend until it gets back above the long term uptrend on the higher time frames. We can take off this support line now. We don't need that. Let's see, looking on the two hour, if we just come right back up and get back on the trend line, when we zoom out and look at a weekly chart, we're not actually heading down this path yet on the weekly chart. It does look like we may, but we can easily bounce. We bounce back here twice. And this one right here, this week, last July, we pulled back quite a bit below that trend line before the bounce happened. That's when it cracked below 30,000. So if you're, if you're really like nervous right now and you want to keep up with what Bitcoin's going to do, just watch this trend line here. This trend line cracks, it could dump more. The trend line holds up, should get back up on the main trend line. Be back bullish. And let's see what the Bitcoin futures show. And yes, you can see that same thing on the Bitcoin futures. 
Bitcoin future having a little tiny pullback in the last two hours, but nothing too major. But both showing that there is a possible rebound or that we may continue to rebound. Let's check Ethereum. So Ethereum, same thing. We're looking at on the two hour chart, just hitting the overall uptrend. We go back out to a daily chart. That's the uptrend right there. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We don't need that line in there. So this could just be another bounce. You know, this could be buying opportunity time on a lot of plays. But, like I said, we need another day, another day, maybe, maybe the rest of this weekend to confirm these support lines. If you actually look at the daily chart, you can see, blow this candle up, where it dipped down but was bought up and buyers are holding Ethereum right above it. So that is, that's a decent sign, but like I said, we still have not had enough time to confirm it. The Ethereum, the Ethereum future is a little bit lower, but I don't have a, a uptrend drawn on it. I was just wanting to see if it's going to hold this support. And it's kind of holding around there. So we'll see what happens with that. The futures are going to act just a little slightly different than the actual coin itself because they are future contracts. So people are maybe pricing in things a little bit different. Uh, let's see, do we have anything that's up today? Mana, mana having a nice little rebound so far from 276, shot up to 350. Do be aware though, this could be that head and shoulder still. Shoulder, head, shoulder. But if mana can break over 350 and start pushing back up to four, we could see it maybe try to break four and move on up. Way off of the uptrend. But you have a lot more people playing mana or buying mana, a lot more volume and transactions just in that ecosystem with a lot of things happening there lately. Yeah, Mr. Cezos, you think we're holding uh, on Bitcoin about about where we're at? That's kind of what I'm thinking. I think that crash yesterday was just a little too much of a reaction. I think it was a knee-jerk reaction. Nowadays, I mean, there's just so many groups of people following somebody. Like uh, the Wall Street Bets and all them other groups on Facebook. Or if you're in a community with like a meme coin or something, one person can start screaming the sky is falling and cause a lot of people to start selling off projects. Because they see it on social media. Like that one little spark of panic can ripple through tons of traders and investors, especially new ones um, and... <laughs> New ones to the space and, and ones that are maybe experienced but have a pride issue where they don't like to learn anything else. You know, this is one thing I can say about investing and trading. You are never a master. There's not a point ever in your life where you're going to be a guru or a master. I have never considered myself that. I hate the idea of that because every single day I am constantly learning more and more about trading, about coins, about markets, like the the grind never stops. You're always going to be a student. And anybody saying that they're a master or a guru is just probably some prideful asshole trying to sell you something. Probably trying to sell you their their uh, smell and their charts. Buy my charts, and uh, you can get my cologne smell. You can hang them on your wall. I got chart posters. <laughs> now, Quick had a big spike. I actually did take a little trade on Quick last night. I'll show you guys this trade real quick. <laughs> Let's 
See what I did there? That was actually the next did. It. Was it quick? No, it's not showing I have any orders on quick. I thought it was quick. Am I lying to myself? Although, this does look like a possible entry for another push up here. Going to the five minute here. Might take a trade. Let's see. Let me go into the out. Get out of here. Go into the hour chart or two hour chart. So on the two hour chart, we just had that spike from 300 up to 370. And we just pulled back a little double flat top across these two bodies. But this little 320 area was some support earlier. So if it looks like we got possible if it could re-break 325 it may could shoot up a little bit I can get about I think I had enough to grab three just about three of them on this account so if it was to run twenty dollars that could be a quick sixty bucks this is a little double bottom on the five minute Let me look here in the one minute. Uh, actually, I may hop in here. I'm going to see if it's going to give me any chance for a pullback on one of these one minute candles, but if it doesn't, I might just jump right in. Doesn't look like we. Yeah, okay, there may be, maybe we may get a little. There we go. Come on, pull back a little bit. FTM did really good. Had a 60% win yesterday on the pullback. Nice. Yeah, I thought it was quick that I traded. Ooh. So, damn, I missed that little. Eh. You know what? jump in here oh oh no no never mind this I can't mark it in this is limit order only right now I don't really want to mm, it could be it could be sketchy I could limit I could try to limit I don't like doing limit orders though in cryptos yeah, I'm not going to try to take this trade when I can't mark it. I didn't notice I couldn't mark it. So what was the trade I took yesterday? What was it? Orders, let's see. Field. Oh, it was A. That's what it was. ALCX. So I remember it was a, I remember it was a high price one, but, you know, when you're day trading, you don't, really pay much attention unless it's something you look at all the time but you can see I bought two and a half there at uh, 355 and it had a nice push up to 400 but I missed that push actually I think I got it this is where I got in at right here I got in in this dip I waited for this dip and started coming back up I got in right in that indecision at 355 and it got up to 394 three let's see what is this 393 that previous resistance line there and it started coming back and when I sold I sold on this red candle and this dip just kind of lost the space there all right here I sold in this dip because I didn't know if it's gonna hold up and you can see it didn't hold up so I locked in that profit uh, about $15 a share or $15 a coin so it was a nice little uh, two and a half coins it was about 45 bucks quick just a quick little snap in there just to grab it that's what I was gonna do on quick but if I can't market order I don't I don't like jumping in there quick if you are a limit order uh, person if you if you like doing that or maybe you're on a platform better than coinbase pro where limit orders are a lot more trustworthy 
Uh, although lately I've not had any problems with Coinbase Pro's limit orders. But this is one to keep on watch. I think, you know, if, a bit, if Bitcoin and Ethereum hold these areas, then a lot of these altcoins that were hot, just like Co uh, Cosmos Atom, because Atom's leading the pack. Adam didn't really, like the pullback didn't affect Adam at all. Like it had that one little dip where, see, right there was the dip on Adam and then it's just come back up. I could look to maybe trade Adam, but it doesn't move very fast because this is a two hour chart. So for it to go to 30, from 35 to 41, it took, a, it took about 12 hours. So that, that's why I don't really day trade Adam any. Okay, well, I'll keep an eye out. If I see something else I want to hop in, though, I may hop in it. Let me go back to those percent gainers. I got caught up there. I thought I was going to be able to make that trade, but hey, if I see money, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, live streaming or what, I will jump in there and take it. We'll see if quick goes up. It's all right. <laughs> See, it's already gone up a dollar and almost two dollars since I was trying to get in it yeah pushing over at 322 all right anyway CKB is up this is a two cent stock just having a little rebound there though it's not one that can get real crazy often unless it has enough volume so I'm not gonna mess with it okay, so let's go over to coinbase what I've been doing because I'm just trading I day trade on coinbase pro I've just been going to coinbase because it has this nice little list on the assets where we can just check the gainers although that doesn't look right what is what's going on there who is destroying the internet right now? Why is everything not working in the world? Like nothing is working. There we go. Okay, so yeah, quick, Decentraland, Ribbon was not on my list. And this is why I'm checking on Coinbase because there's new coins all the time that's added. And I fall behind. Farm is up a little bit too. So let's go check out this Ribbon Finance because I have no idea what it is. Ribbon. We don't have a chart yet for Coinbase. Do you have Tether, Polynex, or Coinex? Let's we'll just go with Polynex. Ooh. What is going on? I don't like that chart. Let's try the other one. Oh, there we go. That's better. So this thing was at two dollars the other day. This thing's definitely bullish with the information we've got. This may have just came out, so that could get some hype on Coinbase. Let's look it up. Let's see if we have any. Mm, interesting. So this thing moved three dollars up to three seventy two. That was only in a couple of hours. That's a pretty good move. This spike in 15 minutes was from 3.30 up to 3.60. So that's 30 cents in 15 minutes. That's not too bad. This possibly could be a, a, a mover, but I need to find out some more information on it. Let's go to CoinGecko and see what this ribbon is about. Number 342, so it's a little bit popular. 7,000 people like it. Is that, uh, what do we got? 51 million in circulating supply, which is a very low amount. Total supply is a billion. Let's see, they've got, okay, they've got it all broke down here where that other half a billion is at. Corporate property. Hmm. Interesting. Only, uh, only a hundred and 
176 million market cap. It's had 14 million in trading volume in the last 24 hours, which for a low a low float like that, low circulating supply, is pretty good. Let's see what their website looks like. All right, okay, they definitely will give you a seizure if you have those problems. Warning, flashing strobe lights. Uh, looks like they've got a covered call. This is, oh, it generates yield by running an automated AVI covered call strategy. And the projected yield is 40%. Interesting. You, yeah, I hodl Adam too, um, but if Adam is really hot, I will take a day trade on it. Because some, like one thing I'll do, if I day trade a token or a coin that I like, then the profit that I would take normally as USD, I don't. I only sell enough coins to cover the investment and then just hold the rest of those coins. Because then at that point, they're just a free investment. So that's what I, that's what I'll do if it's a coin I like. But if it's a coin like uh, ALCX where I don't know nothing about it, I'm not going to hold any of those extra coins. I want that. I want the uh, the cash to build bigger positions on other things. So, but yeah, if you can make a day trade and scalp it or make a nice big win, and you keep some of it, some of the profit in that coin, then that coin is just a free investment. So they have uh, definitely an interesting website, that's for sure. Then they got a blog. Ribbon is on Avalanche. No, oh, actually, they initially launched on Ethereum, and they've always planned to deploy Ribbon on every chain. but they have deployed on to Avalanche. When did this happen? This was December 15th, so this wasn't that long ago. And then they also had some stake Ethereum covered call, covered calls. I'm, I'm trying to kind of figure out what they're meaning by covered calls, because that's normally like an option term. So, I'm not exactly sure. It's, not, it's a very new coin. It's not got a lot going on. On the websites or anything. We'll keep an eye on it. Actually, it's starting to... It's made, The pattern I like here on the 15 minute is nice. So yeah, let's see here. You might be able to get a little trade in on this thing as long yeah I can mark it in I could get 255 so if it could break if it could move up to the 360 it'd be 10 cents it could be a quick little $25 oh it's starting to move right now a little bit let's go in this minute chart and see only problem is I don't want it to get smashed here and start a downtrend so then this could be a big consolidation pattern. I could pick it up at 340. Now this is strictly a day trade. I'm not picking this up to get any coins because I'm interested. I just was looking to see what it was about just to kind of have an idea what I'm dealing with. Now if it could break 360, let me look back on here. Let's look on that two hour chart. Okay. So yeah, it was doing good until this pullback the last couple of days and it took a nice hit yesterday. This is a beautiful U shape on this two hour chart. It just dropped down to 345, 349. Oh, no, it looks like it's going to climb. Yeah, okay, this, this, because this is a CoinX chart, the prices are a little bit different. 
But if it can break back over here, if it can break 350, that's been the main resistance line. It could shoot back up to four. That'd be 50 cents. That'd be a pretty good win. Let's give it a second here. I may try to jump in. Because if we could get that break over 360, even if it just even if it just ran up to uh, Okay, so see how this candle right here has made this little, there's not a lot of volume in this thing at the second. It's actually, I don't, I'm not even going to consider those. Eh, you know what? There's a little pullback. For this to be a major resistance area, there's not a lot of selling going on, but there needs to be more buying coming in. Look at this 15 minute. Oh, okay. Now we got a nice story. Yeah, when this thing pops, it just gets random spurts of buying. Like, look at this huge spike right here. That big spike was a 15-minute spike from 375 all the way up to 450. So that type of buying volume, this thing can explode if it gets any. Which it possibly could because you can see it on the 15-minute here. The line, the price where the price is, is the exact line that I would draw for this resistance line, or very close to it. Oops, because this line was previously resistance back through here, right on this tip, hitting here, and then it held up as support through here. Then it held as resistance again through there. And we're just testing it at the moment. So it could get that type of weird pop. I don't know if it would do it right now, though. I just like the way the pattern's looking. Now oh, look at that. Four of those candles in a row. Flat topping out. So buyer, there's no buyers coming in over 350 we have one buyer sitting on the order books at 350 for 124 coins it's not a super big position So if Bitcoin and Ethereum hold where they're at, we're going to see a lot of these little bounce opportunities to make some quick scalps and day trades. But just, you know, you don't want to be buying anything. You want to make sure you're getting into something that can uh, actually run and, and don't be buying things at the top. <laughs> Never wanna, you never want to enter a trade at the top. And that's why I'm waiting, because on this 5-minute, it shows we came down that 340 support. But it looks like, let's see, we got two minutes on this 5-minute candle left to confirm. And we needed to confirm by breaking over 352. Which has not been able to do. There's just no volume. Man, the thing is, this thing could be crazy because if that volume just shoots out of nowhere, it just could start shooting up. The same thing could happen to the sell side. And it is kind of making, let's see, what is that, the 15 minute? I need a better chart. This chart, this uh, 
options of charts on this thing is not good. Okay, that looks better. I can work with that. So this came out on Coinbase on December 9th. So it's been on there a while. Hmm. And you see I had a little pullback there, but not a, not a big deal. I'm going to hold off on that one for now. Just, just for now. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Did I put it on this chart? I don't think I did. Let me put it on here. Just because it is uptrending. Oh, there's the Coinbase chart. Wait, is that is that the right chart? Yeah. Why didn't it show me that before? I'm gonna go back and watch this stream. I'm pretty sure you guys saw that. There wasn't another Coinbase. There wasn't a Coinbase chart. It was just these two. Unless I'm freaking out. If I go back and look, and Coinbase was on there. There we go. This uh, now I can see what's going on. This is a lot better chart. Okay. So it's holding up. Let's go ahead and add that to the green list for now. Holding up above this 10-day moving average. So if it can hold that, that's where we can see the curl. But I don't think it's going to shoot up today now that I'm looking at this daily chart. It looks like it may just try to hold this area. So let's look into an earlier time frame or a shorter time frame, not earlier. Okay, so we do have... This uptrend right here that is formed. See, now that I can actually see this chart, I can see I'd be getting in a little bit high. Get. So the downtrend is like there. So it's like just now trying to rebound and break the downtrend. So that 350 is a major area of resistance, but it confirmed the bounce. Unless, uh, unless something crazy happens, another big pullback across all the markets, this does look like this could be a decent play over the next few days of rebounding. Yeah, come on back down some. I'm going to keep an eye on you. Oh, yeah. Coin, let's go back to Coinbase, see what else is on there. Yearn, we know about. Wrapped Centrifuge, I do not know nothing about. We do have, yeah, the rest of these are on here. Let's check Farm, because Farm is another one I like to day trade when I can catch it. Because Farm... Very low, low supply coin, and when it gets bought up, it moves insanely. And we just saw another big move from it the other day where it ran from 100 all the way up to 290. So it did actually already have a bounce today, just now having the bounce. It may be a continuation bounce, though. Let's hop over the farm. This is a continuation bounce. This could be a good chance. Oof. Yeah, look at that 15 minute. This thing just bounced $10. <laughs> so I could get five farms. So, shoo. Five farm. If this thing moves $10, that's 50 bucks. So if it goes down $10, yeah, let me, mark, let me map this out on a shorter time frame. There's our five minute downtrend. So it's gonna be if this thing is gonna break, it's gonna be in the next ten minutes, or it's gonna pull back down to the fifty day. See one fifty nine is where the ten is. 
Let's see if I can get in here and tr try to sneak a good entry. I want to see some type of pullback. I don't really want to get it at 162. Come, if it could come back down just a little bit. See, we got one minute on this five minute candle. Let's see how this candle closes because this looks like, I mean, if it closes right here, then it was just a little breather candle and the next candle would determine, like I was saying, whether it breaks out. Let's give it, okay, so starting to dump there. That's why we want to wait for the candle to close. Candle just closed, but we've closed selling off. So we definitely want to be aware, make sure that this is going to hold right here. Now, if this can push back up for another test, if it can push back over 163, then it could start to shoot out. This could be the breakout. So it's going to depend on this candle. If it drops below, okay, it looks like it may start dumping. Yeah, okay, there it comes. So this may be a chance to start looking for an entry here, possibly. Yeah, I like that dump. Yeah, come on back down. What I'm thinking though, if I put this on a 15 minute, hmm, there's a lot of selling pressure above 165. That's what's been holding us up. And that is exactly where it looks like. Let's see. Yep, that's where we started dumping yesterday. So we kind of made this little nice U-shape. And, and we're actually testing the break back above this U-shape on the 15 minutes. So 15 minute, we're showing breakout. Five minutes showing breakout. Let's check the one hour. One hour, same thing showing breakout. Just need to see this candle. So there's 45 minutes on this candle at any point in time. Looking pretty good. But this thing's very, very low supply. So on the four hour, you can see clearly where we are getting rejected at that line. This candle is being pushed back down below that line. If I remove this line, you can see that wick where it shot up to 168. But if it can hold there, so we're starting, we're starting to look like a breakout maybe on all charts. But because it's hitting that area, if it doesn't break out over it, it's going to come back down probably all the way to 145. It'll probably give this whole drop, this whole rip back. So I think I may get in here in a second. I'm just waiting, like I said, to see. If we're going to start breaking over 163 again. Okay. Getting a little pull back. Do I want to get it there? Okay, so see here, we are right smack dab in the middle of that that uh, resistance line. The candle is five minute candle is trying to hold it up. Actually, that was a good little push. We got two minutes on that candle.
Let's see what. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So see, buyers still trying to hold it above there. I'm looking for it to come down to 160 to get in. If it's going to dump any, drop anymore, but it's really holding up that 162 area. Oh, I'm jumping in here. We just got to buy and push real quick up to that 62, 63. I'm in at 62.56. And let's see if this thing can start ripping or not. Because it's going to, whoa, there we go. Nice push up straight up to 164. Let's see if it keeps going. We still got it. We got to break 165. We got to break 167. We got to break 168. We got to break all these previous highs to really go on a nice move here. And we're coming right up to 165 now. Testing it. So we got to break one. Like I said, we got three resistance lines we got to bust through. We need to basically get over 170. And that is my dog. Anytime I start trading, he loves to bark and tell me to buy and sell. I keep telling him to stop doing that. The SEC is going to get him. He's like, nah, man, I'm a dog. I'm a, I'm a Australian blue tick hound mix. I don't care about that SEC. <laughs> Ooh, nice, nice little, started to dip a little bit, but got another buy up at 165. You can see right here on the order book, that, whoa, well, there was a big seller. He just got taken out, as I was saying that. And we are hitting 165, busting through 165. So I'm up $3 a, a coin so far. So I'm up about, uh, about 16, 17 bucks. Well, this so was the fee, $3. So I'm up about $14. Let's see if this guy can keep ripping. Like I said, 170. We get through 170 and we are good to go. But I am keeping my finger on this trigger. Because just as fast as this thing can go up is as fast as it can go down. We are, look at this, look at this, just beautiful. Just beautiful. All the way up to 170. Now this is going to be a major resistance. So if it does not start testing or breaking, I may take this profit. Because I'm up now $5 a coin, so I'm up about 30 bucks. I'm going to give it a second to try to test 170 and see if it can break. Yeah, I'm trading right now, Ruben. <laughs> I'm in uh farm here looking for a 170, 175 breakout for a rebound. Possible quick pop through this 175, something. Okay, here comes a test of 170. Like I said, if it can't break 170, we start struggling here too long. I'm going to lock this out. <laughs> Sam's telling me to sell. There we go. We're testing 170. Sam's barking. He's like, sell, sell, sell. You're at resistance. See, we're trying to push on up. Let's see, can we get up that 175? Ooh, come on on up there. Some of almost ten dollars a coin. That's fifty bucks. Going pushing up to about sixty bucks. Oh, come come on, a little bit more. Get up that one seventy five. Let me make a quick hundo and call it a day. I'm locking it out right here. It's struggling a little bit too much for me. I don't like how it's struggling. So I got five and a half of them at, let's see, what would I get in? 162. It, oh, look at this. 
Look at this. I might have sold too soon. That thing just threw a wick way up there. Nope, nope. I didn't. Look at that. That's why I said just as fast as this thing can come up is as fast as it can come down. So that 175 area was that strong, strong resistance. It's a natural area. 25, 50, 75 whole numbers. Um, they're going to be strong areas. Now, it can still could break. We're on a one-minute chart, but this was just a, a quick scalp. I, it, like I said, I don't know about this one. I don't. I, it may continue to rip. But I got my little lick. I got my little my little um, ATM withdrawal from the crypto market for now. So that was five and a half of them at 162, and I sold all five and a half at 171.74. So that's nine dollars a coin on five and a half. That would be 45 plus 45, so 50 bucks minus three minus six dollars, 45 dollar. It's quick scout like that. All right. Well, I think that's a day for me. Like I said, this is going to be if Bitcoin and Ethereum hold these areas, we're going to see plenty of opportunities as scalpers and traders to hop in these altcoins looking for these rebounds back to their previous prices. If that was a flash crash yesterday and it wasn't a full on crazy crash, then, uh, you know, we'll come back up will have rebounds. So the volatility is great for making um, scalps and stuff like this. So yeah, keep an eye, keep an eye on everything. You know, anything could rip. That's that's all I did. I just went to Coinbase and sorted by percent change in the trade bar, and went down through this list of percent gainers. Which ones are green? Which ones are rebounding already? We saw a farm. You know, I went through quite a bit of these. I went almost made like two two trades before I even got to farm. That's why you, you know you got to know your technical analysis because one little one little shift in a candle, one little shift in um, sentiment of buyers and sellers, and the whole you know if Bitcoin drops. It's the freak out thing like we saw yesterday. That could happen during a day trade, during a scalp like I was just in. So you, you really got to know your technical analysis to be aware of if one little one little switch happens, get out of it. Take your little profit. And that's what I saw on farm and why I jumped out there at 172 because it started struggling. We go into the one back into the one minute. It had it held up. I kept looking at this order book, and that 172 popped up again quite a bit, like it did previously there. And like I said, we know 175 is a technical resistance line. So seeing that one, seeing that one little switch on the level two, the order book. I was able to go. Okay, I need to. I need to lock this out because now that I'm out of it, I can get back in if this thing comes back down to 160 again, or maybe 165. Maybe it starts holding a new support area. Yeah, like you could sit here if if everything is rebounding, you could take scalps on the same trade over and over again. But yeah, that's it for me tonight. Um. What's going on with Litecoin? Let me check Litecoin real quick and then I'm going to call it a night. Let me get off of the five hour chart, get back into the daily chart. I mean, it just pulled back with Bitcoin. It's still on, still could hold that trend line. So, I mean, the same thing we're waiting on with Bitcoin and Ethereum, same thing we're waiting on Litecoin. But 133, it's. I mean, that's relatively cheap on Litecoin. It, it, it's going to depend. You know, Litecoin just follows Bitcoin so close. So as long as Bitcoin's holding, Litecoin will probably just hold. And then if Bitcoin starts rebounding, Litecoin will rebound. It doesn't do too much outside of Bitcoin. As much as I wish it would, it just doesn't. <laughs> Let's see. Check God's real quick. Yeah, God's still trying to test that 350 area. So there could be another pullback there. Bitcoin has a head and shoulders pattern. 
Let me look and see if I can see what they're talking about. Hold on. So this is the daily chart. There's certainly not, I mean, okay, I see what they're looking at, but let me remove these. Actually, I can move the drawings. So what they're seeing is they're seeing this. They're only looking at this. This is the head and shoulders that whoever is talking about a head and shoulders is talking about. And this is short-sighted technical analysis. This is, this is Ruben, this is the same thing as I was... Um, when I went on that rant yesterday morning, which I don't know if you were in there on the on the stock market live stream on the Framework Fortune Home channel, I was going on a rant about how you only have a certain amount of time of the U.S. stock market to look at, and when you're looking at a smaller time frame, like for day trading, we look at a five minute and a fifteen minute, but we also look at an hour and a, a daily chart to look at that past chart history. What's happened with this thing in the past? Well, a lot of people have this idea that the U.S. stock market can't crash because it's been around for 200 years. But when you're looking at it just from that small time frame of 200 years, because 200 years, you scale out, is a small time frame compared to the thousands of years of human existence that we have. So... This is the same type of uh, deal here where they're looking at from August. Let's see, this is July 23rd where this shoulder is of last year. We had a little peak up to 70,000 and then we're having the other shoulder here. So yeah, this does look like a head and shoulder. Maybe Bitcoin could crack here. It's definitely a possibility. But when we scroll out and we look at the whole time picture, we're actually showing on the overall picture that there, that head and shoulders is only half of this big consolidation pattern. And you can draw this consolidation pattern multiple ways. I drew the resistance line at 60,000, but you can draw it like that if you wanted to to make it more of a pointy wedge. The 60,000 has just been the main area that Bitcoin struggled to hold above. Uh, you know, this could very easily bounce here. I mean, the trend line is right here. So it could bounce or it could crack either way. But it's not going to crack because of this head and shoulders pattern. Because other traders... Anybody who who does technical analysis every single day is going to look back further than July of last year. <laughs> like, like that July when this started, that was a bounce off of the trend line. When this pattern that they're they're calling a head and shoulders. So, if it if it is a head and shoulders, that means that we're just going to drop to right here. Right across this bottom at 30,000. Because that's where it started at. So you, it's a shoulder because it makes another arm down. So that it would look just like this uh, pathway that I have drawn. But you can look at it as a head and shoulders. At the same time, you can look at it this big wedge at a longer time frame. And what do we know? The longer the time frame, the stronger the time frame. So maybe, maybe Bitcoin drops down to 30,000 and completes that head and shoulders. Or we could see it just hold up this week and bounce right off of here and shoot up over the next two months and hit that 75K mark. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, today, right now, there's not a way to, to tell. For sure, because we're look if we look at the shorter time frames, Bitcoin is uptrending off of this uptrend or off of the uh, it's uptrending intraday off of the bigger time frame uptrend. So it's bouncing. So unless this little micro uptrend cracks, 
it would just continue to ride up that trend line there. So it would make this bounce. So they're either really wrong, if that is their prediction, or they're really right, but it's a 50-50% uh, shot that they have to call this right now. And um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, if it was to be that case to drop down to 30000 I don't think it would be because of the whole crypto market uh, crashing or anything like that. It would certainly have an effect on all of the altcoins. We could see some nasty pullbacks, absolutely. But, you know, that would be more likely because of Bitcoin losing dominance to Ethereum or something. And that, if that's the case, if Bitcoin is losing dominance and going down, then we wouldn't really see too much pullbacks in the rest of the market because that means money would be coming out of Bitcoin and going into other cryptos like Ethereum, like Atom, like Avalanche, uh, all those blockchain projects. So in either case, long term, it doesn't really matter. Now, short term, you know, if you're a swing trader or whatever, you might be really concerned about that. But uh, I'm not a Bitcoin bull. If you're a Bitcoin bull and you're worried about it and all your portfolio is in Bitcoin, well, you know. You know the sayings about keeping your eggs all in one basket. Somebody will come by and crush those little eggs. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I'm not a fortune teller. Just looking at the technical analysis, it looks like it'll probably bounce. And then, like I said, if it does pull back, 30,000 would be strong, strong support. It was very strong support back through here. So, I mean, we're not going to see it just dump through 30,000. The other, the other thing is, if Bitcoin would have peaked at the same peak right here, like if it would have just went up to this little high at 63,000, I would be more apt to go, yeah, maybe this is a head and shoulders pattern because that would be a double top. That would be confirmation of double resistance areas. But Bitcoin made a new high. The last run, it went up to 70,000. So it's been building higher highs and if it holds here, that's another higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. All pivot points, points of contact. And if that's the case, it would be this wedge pattern, and the wedge pattern would lead to a breakout at some point in this year. But like I said, the Bitcoin dominance is a thing. Like That is going to be something as if you are into Bitcoin, you're going to want to keep an eye on as I do believe Bitcoin will lose dominance to other coins, especially the cheaper uh, coins that are popping up, like uh, Solana, the, the cheaper blockchain, Solana, Cosmos, Atom, of course, because I'm bullish all the time, every day on Atom. So, yeah. Let's see, what's Sheeb doing? I didn't check Sheeb today for the Sheeb, Sheba Knights. I know I got plenty of Sheba Knights out there. Uh, and you can see Sheeb just still holding this bottom support. Just this three cent area trying to do its thing. If it can hold there, that's a double bottom. Sheep could actually bounce here soon. You know, that's another thing, too. That's another thing, too. Like, going back to Bitcoin and Ethereum, where are they at? Like, it's not like Bitcoin and Ethereum or the crypto market was at, like, a sideways area and just dumped and sold off. Like, Bitcoin had just ran half of last year up to that new high, and then we were selling off anyway. As this has been a normal healthy pullback for the most part other than the two little flash crashes the one right here that was real crazy and then the shorter one yesterday but if anything looking at this like that this is a shorter candle a shorter flash crash than this one that would signify to me that buyers are coming in at this area which we already know because this is a trend line so, of course, buyers normally come in there. Now, on the volume picture, it's not showing any buying. It's showing more selling. 
because all these candles are red the last week. But even with the last two days, since a day even being red, it's still holding up. So we'll see. I, there's more confirmation to me of it bouncing here than not bouncing. And then also Cosmos Atom just hit new highs up at 45 like two days ago or three days ago. And it's back up to 40. So Cosmos Atom may just lead the market for a little bit like it did last year. So we'll be back tomorrow. We'll keep, uh, we'll keep a close eye on it. That's why I do these updates uh, Mondays through Saturday, 4 p.m., 4.15-ish p.m., something around there, Central. And uh, we also do the live Gods on Chain gameplay if you're new to the channel. Be sure to subscribe and also go check out FrameworkFortune.com. Free signups, no paywall. You can join the Discord uh, from there and challenge people and gods unchained in the Framework Fortune community. Check out some of the technical analysis content from myself, H&H uh, &H Trader, One Life, Ruben. We got all types of traders in the community if you're interested in all of that. Stocks, cryptos, gold, silver. We've got it all. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.